Hello everybody, JP from JP's Aviation here, and welcome back to another video. JetBlue has a fleet of 276 aircraft, comprising of the Airbus A220, A320, A321, A321LR, A321neo, and the Embraer E190. JetBlue will use the A220s to replace their 60 Embraer E190s by 2025. JetBlue has 132 Airbus aircraft on order. Excluding the E-190s, JetBlue has only used Airbus aircraft in its 21 years of operation. Let's take a look at why JetBlue picked Airbus and why it stuck with it for the past 21 years. JetBlue had a lot of money invested into the then startup. This let the airline buy new aircraft, which is actually pretty rare for a new airline. Like how Airbus and Boeing are competing for the Air France KLM order right now, Boeing and Airbus competed for JetBlue's order, and Boeing was actually favored with their new 737 Next Generation. It's worth mentioning that Neilman's other airline operated a mostly 737 fleet. Now, this airline was purchased by Southwest Airlines, which Neilman did work for for a small amount of time, so Neilman was no stranger to the Boeing 737. So what went wrong? Well, from what I've read online, it was many factors, the biggest of which was the discount on the aircraft. Airlines almost never pay full list price for their aircraft, and the larger the order, the higher the discount usually is. The discount would also be larger if the airline was a loyal customer to the manufacturer. Boeing also didn't want to work on factors with JetBlue like financing and delivery slots, so Neilman went to Airbus and got the deal he wanted at a much lower cost. The A320 is also a better aircraft for airlines with a higher exit limit and range than 737-800. JetBlue also saw the A320 was better for passengers as it had a wider cabin than the 737 Next Generation. The JetBlue situation is very comparable to the situation in EasyJet in 2002, which had an all 737 fleet. EasyJet ordered 120 Airbus A319s at a 20% discount. Remember that Airbus wasn't seen as much as a threat as it should have been. This led Boeing into a false sense of security, not wanting to give out huge discounts to airlines because they thought they were going to get the order either way. And Boeing also didn't want to take the risk of JetBlue failing. I have also seen many people say that Boeing didn't think low-cost carriers would work. Now, I don't find this true because two of the biggest 737 operators are low-cost carriers, Southwest and Ryanair. In 2018, JetBlue ordered 60 A220s. As I mentioned previously, these A220s are being used for the replacement of the E190s. Originally, the E190s were ordered to serve on routes with less demand, which the rest of the A320 family could serve on, but they had a higher capacity than the E190. So, the E190 needs a replacement, why not order the direct replacement, the E190 E2? Well, 10 days before JetBlue made the order, Airbus welcomed a superior aircraft into their portfolio, which was, of course, the A220, formerly known as the C-Series. The A220 does have a higher capacity than the E190, but does have a superior passenger experience, a longer range, and a 40% lower fuel seat cost, not to mention the aircraft would be built in the United States. It seems that Neilman really likes the E-Jets as most of his airlines do operate them, so I wonder if he was still at JetBlue if they would have made the E2 order and not the A220. I doubt it because Breeze does have the A220 on order, and for the reasons I mentioned previously. But it is fun to think about. And what about the rest of the Airbus orders? Well, these are very self-explanatory. As JetBlue operates A320 Classic family, it only makes sense that they would order the A320neo family, which is much more versatile than its competitors the 737 MAX. The long range capabilities of the A321LR and XLR will let the airline expand into Europe and compete more with the legacy carriers, which they really haven't been able to do. So it seems like picking Airbus worked out in the end. Let me know what you think. If you think I missed any points on why JetBlue chose Airbus, let me know. I look forward to discussing it with you down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time on JP's Aviation. Goodbye.